Hey, how's it going everyone? I am going to do a video today on my Amplituba setup. A lot of people ask me about it, and um, so I'm happy today to kind of describe the basics of it and what each thing does. Um, keep in mind there's a number of ways to skin a cat, as they say. Not that I would ever skin a cat. I don't even know where that comes from. But uh, there are lots of ways to do things um, in its most basic form. Um, you know, you need to capture the sound from the tuba, and then it needs to go into an amplifier <laughs> of some sort. You need to be able to amplify it. But I'll walk everybody through that, and I hope you enjoy it. Please, if you like the video, hit uh, like, and then subscribe, and share it with your friends, and do all sorts of stuff. I'm trying to build up my YouTube channel, so please do that. And if you have any questions, send, them, send me a message or put it in the comments, and I'll do my best to get back to them as soon as I can. So this is everything. This is everything in the rig. So there's my tuba. Um, we may or may not go over that. That's a laptop stand. That's my iPad stand. Uh, this is uh, my Pelican case. It's got wheels. It's waterproof. It locks up, which is great. And uh, and I'll let you take a quick look. All right. So here's the inside of the Pelican case. If you take a quick look, see right here. That is my looper. We'll go over that. Underneath it is my PA speaker. We have a couple of loose pedals that don't fit on my board, which is right here. I've got some styrofoam to kind of keep everything in place. Underneath there is a pair of headphones and my DJ machine. So let's get some stuff out and start fooling around. So now we have everything out. So here's my tuba, there's my effects board, there's all my cords, which yes, I use most of not all of them. And then a couple of pedals, like I said, that didn't fit on the board, my looper, and the loudspeaker. So I'm gonna plug it up and then give an explanation of what everything is and does. Okay, now we've got everything plugged up, plugged in, turned on, and let's have a look. The first place we need to start is the microphone. So if you look, I have decided to put the microphone down into the bell. It is probably about the same level as the uh, as the mouthpiece, as the lead pipe there. I have it Velcroed in. I've got some extra tape just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And then here I have the wire duct taped just so that it doesn't fly into my face. So that's our first step. So I'd say the next step is what freaks everybody out because they're like, Oh my god, what the heck is all that crap, <laughs> right? And yeah, I don't blame you. So, coming out of the tuba. So we have the, this is the mic cord that comes out of the tuba. So this is, um, so in the mic, by the way, uh, is a, a short SM57, which SM57s are, are great for any sort of, they're great. They're really great for, for micing instruments. They're pretty inexpensive. They're indestructible. The type of cord that comes out if you're just getting started is called an XLR. So uh, to go into a pedal, you'll need a cord that is an XLR to a, and that is called a quarter inch pedal. So all of these pedals all have quarter inch ins and outs. Right, so right here. So this is where it's first coming in. This is actually the first, first pedal that it's going into. Now, if we were to make this really, really, really simple, and uh, if you're just starting out, I would suggest starting with maybe just one pedal. And one pedal that's really good is something like maybe the Boss Digital Delay. So the delay pedals are, are real easy to get around on, and they're real easy to make some like basic noises and to do some funky stuff with. You know, you can set the delay time very long and start playing chords with yourself. So that's something like that is a good chord to get, a good, sorry, good, the good pedal to get started with, right? But let's go over here just for clarity's sake, just so you can kind of see what all of this looks like. Now, uh, a number of these pedals, but not all, especially I think on this bottom row, uh, they work, uh, or can work rather, uh, on a nine volt battery. As you can see, all of mine have little power plugs on them, right? So this is right here in the rat's nest. So it's called a one spot, right? So you have a cord that comes out of the one spot and then it breaks off and it's actually powering all of these pedals right now. 
So, if you look, say for example here in the Earthquaker Devices Data Corruptor, this is our power supply right here. So it's a 9 volt power, su power supply, which is pretty common, although not all are. Uh, I think that's not a 9, I think that's a 12, but I'll have to double check. But anyway, back to the Data Corruptor. So this is the power. So you'll need to power your pedals either with batteries or some, some sort of either adapter. There are some like, for example, this one is a, has its own adapter and plugs in right over here, right? Or something like a one spot or a power supply. My power setup is pretty messy right now. Uh, I'm probably going to buy a dedicated power supply to kind of clean all of it up. And that'll probably reduce some noise and some hum. Hey, there's my toes. So anyway, so you look here and we have an input and an output, right? So for example, if we were to take that cord there from the microphone, go straight in here and go straight out of here and into my amplifier, or in this case, powered loudspeaker, then you would have a setup that's all ready to go. So for a very, very basic setup, you would need a mic, some sort of pedal with a power supply, and a way to amplify it. I've been using this recently. So this is a powered speaker. If you're confused and you're like, I don't know if it's a powered speaker or not. If it's got a power cord that comes out of it, and it makes noise without anything else, it's a powered speaker. Right? Powered speakers. This one ran, uh, I got it on sort of a deal, and it was like a floor model, around 300 or so dollars. So, it's a sizable investment. Uh, the Shure SM57 microphones, I think, are around 150. Pedals go anywhere from about 75 to maybe $250 or more in that case. And, um, and just with that, you can kind of get a basic setup going. Okay, so a few more things before we get going. So uh, I've had a lot of questions on, well, why do you, you why do you put the microphone all the way down on the bell? Why don't you put it on a stand? Why don't you use a clip, you know? So uh, I've tried stands and I'm really bad with them because I'm terrible at mic discipline because I like to move around when I play. And also I have a tendency to knock them over. So I don't do that. Uh, Clip-ons are fine, although I've had plenty of clips break on me in the middle of a live show, and then I just started duct taping it to the bell. And then I figured, well, if I'm going to do that, why don't I put it further down the bell, which is actually a lot of New Orleans bands use that um, as part of their tradition of micing the sousaphones. They put it down a little bit further, and it gets a slightly more bass-like sound. The other reason I do it is because of of my effects. So uh, feedback is pretty common with uh, guitar effects and so what that does is it mitigates some of the feedback that you might get. One of the other questions I get a lot is about my amplifier. So uh, I was using a bass amp for a while and still do sometimes. It's an orange Terror Bass 1000 4x10 speakers. It's, it's totally effing metal which is great. But um, it's a little bit heavy. It doesn't fit in my case. <laughs> and it's only got one input. And um, for what I'm doing right now, I'm using two inputs because I am using my tuba. And then later in sort of the advanced portion of this video, I'll show you the DJ machine that I'm using as well. So for right now, for my needs, um, this, this powered speaker is working out just a little bit better. All right, so back to the pedals. So uh, the first thing that I'm running through is an AB pedal. Right, so AB just means that you could have two different things input and you can switch back and forth without having to unplug uh, unplug it. Of course, when you unplug it, you get a big loud noise, so this it cuts it down. So for example, if I wanted to have my tuba in A and my bass in B, then I could just have my bass here on a stand. I could play tuba, put it down, hit A or B right here, switch it over, play bass, and then go back to playing tuba. Next in, uh, in my order, and I kind of forget some of this order sometimes, but I have a pretty good idea. Um, and if you look here, I have, this is a, what's called a Pedal Train Classic Junior, so all of my pedals are mounted to this board uh, via Velcro. You can see the, there's a nice little rat's nest there below it. <clears throat> but coming out of this, I go into my two delay pedals. So most people put delay at the end of the chain. I put them first. And the reason why I do, and I'll show you this in some of the demo, is that when I do that, I can basically set up a delay loop, and then anything that is past that delay, so if the delay is continuing to go, 
Any effects that I turn on, it will affect the delay and what I'm playing. So one of the other pedals, uh, and yeah, well, before we go. So digital delay, this is a nice pedal. This one uh, is actually out of production. This is the, um, the DD20. Uh, these are both boss pedals. And this one has like a 32 second delay time. It's really insane, but it works great for some of the things that I'm doing. Over here we have the uh, the, the Electro Harmonics Bass Micro Synth. So we've got uh, sub octave, regular octave, and upper octave. There's a square wave. So this this can kind of work as, as almost like an octave pedal. Square wave distortion. You can do attack delay. I'm not really sure why. We have the resonance here. Um, it's a filter sweep, so you can go. And this is the rate on the sweep. This is a fun pedal. Uh, I use it pretty often. Um, for different things uh, in different ways, it's um, it's got it, it's pretty flexible. Uh, it was also the pedal that probably took the longest for me to figure out. So uh, moving along, uh, I've got two of my distortions here. Uh, this is also an electro whoops <laughs> electro harmonics. This is the uh, the bass Big Muff Pi Nano. So Nano just means it's small. It's a really nice fuzz pedal. So if I want a lot of fuzz. Um, that's not the square wave sound, not sort of a digital sound, but sort of like a warm sound. That's what I go for. Next is the uh, the Boss Bass Overdrive. Um, it's a good pedal. It kind of goes, it does one thing, but it does that one thing really well. Um, that's the Kill, Maim, and Destroy switch is that one right there. We also have a Boss Bass Chorus. Um, you know, if I were to say to somebody, if someone said, hey, tell me two... I don't know, maybe two different effects pedals to get. I'd probably say one would be a delay pedal and two maybe a chorus. So chorus is fun, sort of gives a nice detuned effect, does some other things as well. Moving along, so this is the whammy pedal. So this here um, does crazy things with the pitch. So you adjust where what you want it to do, turn it on, and then this is your expression pedal. So uh, you can set it to go up an octave or two octaves. I have it on two octaves up and two octaves down a lot so that I can do like dive bomb or or to play really high, uh, like really, really high on it. Um, moving along, so these are some of my newer pedals uh, and these are really wacky and uh, not on a board yet. I'm, I'm planning on getting a new board because I'm out of space. Um, and as you can tell, like with this, I literally plug into here, plug out and, and it's done. For these, I have to plug in the power supply and then each little cord from one to the next, which is why I have everything on a board. It makes everything really easy. I get to a gig, zip open the, uh, the case, put the board on the floor, plug it up one, two, and I'm done. So moving along, so this is a WMD Geiger counter. So this is known as a bit crusher. So you can go all the way, you can go from eight bit, like the old video games down to one. You can mess with the sample rate. Uh, it's got a wave table here. It's uh, it's got like something like I think 250 some odd different waves, sound waves you can do. You can really just destroy sounds and make it sound <laughs> really like your amp is exploding. So next are two Earthquaker device pedals. I love Earthquaker devices stuff. They also made me an artist. So woohoo! <laughs> and um, so the Data Corruptor does just that. It's got a three voice different, uh, you've got different oscillators on there, so it really messes with the pitch. You can use it to put things in strange octaves. You can have stuff slide or go like, make all sorts of crazy noises with it. It's, it's a lot of fun. You'll hear it. This is the Earthquaker Devices Rainbow Machine. So it is uh, almost like an arpeggiator, but it also does a chorus and delay. It does all sorts of cool stuff. Next is probably the silliest pedal that I have. This is the Korg Miku. It is a vocoder. So it takes what I'm playing and makes it sound like a female Japanese singer. And as you can see, it can be set to different, um, I don't know what you'd call those, different uh, vocalizations, right? And then different uh, Japanese phrases. It's, uh, it's real glitchy on tuba, which makes it pretty exciting. Uh, this is my looper. So. Loopers are great. Yeah, if you can score one, uh, by all means, um, they take a little bit of getting used to. This one is pretty darn user friendly. It's uh, pretty easy for the most part. Um, it's got three separate tracks. 
one, two, and three, and it's basically got a record button and a stop button. You can layer on top of each of those tracks almost infinitely, but once you record another track over, say, track one, say you record track one and then record another one over it, then it's a destructive record and you can't remove that second one. So a lot of times when I'm doing things, I'll record on track one, for example, track two, and then track three. And then what I can do is say I want to pull track one out, I just go boop, hit stop, boop, hit stop on two, stop on three, hit, then hit, you know, play on any number of them, or all stop or all start there. There's also a, a loop effect in here. I don't really use the effects on here because I don't like the effects as well as some of the others that I have over here. Coming out of that, I'm just, like I said, just going into the speaker. And that is basically the whole effects setup for me. Okay, so this is the newest part of my setup. And uh, no, not, not my Eastman C-Tube over there, which is pretty fantastic. But it is the Pioneer DJ. This is their WeGo 4. So uh, this is their turntable setup. It runs off of an iPad. The lightning cord comes out and goes direct USB in. It's got a power supply right here, which I'm running to the rest of my, uh, where I have everything else plugged in over there in the rest nest. And then right here, there's the plug that goes out, down around, and to my loudspeaker. So what's pretty cool about this, because this is pretty user friendly, so here's my iPad, right? So you open the app, DJ2, right? You make sure that it's on. Right, and then this looks a lot like this, okay? So in its most basic form, right? So uh, one thing that's great is you can use Spotify with it, which is fantastic, right? So you go over here, right? And you can start pulling up all sorts of songs, right? So let's, let's go to browse and let's, let's do this right here. That's fine. Wow, it is hard to type wired. And blip tuba T. <laughs> All right. Anyhow, let's just find one here. Let's go to classical. Why not? Let's go Stockhausen. Right. So we'll just grab this first work here, and then you'll see it appear here. Right. Now you can control it here. Right? You can also control the speed here, right? Uh, you can do all sorts of stuff. There are some effects you can do. You can set up loops on this, right? You can also control it down here. So, right? So now I'm going to move this here and you'll see it move on the screen, right? You can then set up another track. Let's just grab another one. We'll grab another Stockhausen, right? All right, and same. Same, you can control the speed. You can control the volume of each down here. So you can make the second one very loud. Right? You can set the volume about the same and go back and forth to one or the other. Right? And same thing, you can set up different loops and different effects. Right? Right? You can pause it. Pause it. Start it back up again. You can choose how many how many beats you want. Let's just go with eight, right? Let's go with eight and set up a loop. That sets up a loop right there. All right, and there you go. You got a loop, right? Then you can come over here. You can add effects to it. Let's add a. Back up to here, FX number two, which is a bit crusher. So the nice thing is with this, you can set up a lot of cool textures. I kind of use it almost like a noise maker. Sometimes I steal drum beats, and uh, but it, it's really opened up um, more options for me as a performer. And when you include this. 
with my Eastman C2, but I play Eastman, big fan. All right, with my Parker Mouthpiece, Parker Hall, in case anyone's wondering, 32.6 and the Freelancer Backboard. With all of the pedals I have, the looper machine, and the loudspeaker, I've got lots of options to try and make all kinds of crazy music. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks so much.